Good day and welcome to the Gymni Gathering of 2023. We're over here in Clarence. The trip basically started on Thursday. I was privileged enough to drive the five door Gymni down from Durban to Clarence while the rest of the Gymnies came across the country from Joburg, East London, Free State, Cape Town, you name it. There's people that came from Namibia. Everyone is here gathered at Clarence just on a farm called Lankerolskloof. And we don't know the numbers, but they're expecting close to a thousand Gymnies. Like you can see behind me there, there's thousands of them, hundreds of them to be correct, around me. So the day, or the weekend started on Thursday. Most people stayed over at Kharipdan from Cape Town. Uh, we came through on Friday from Durban side. Then Friday night, there was a silent disco happening. There's a campsite that they set up for us. So there's a lot of people, I think they ex expected or they had 380 gymnies in the campsite. There was dedicated campsites for them. Awesome little party they had over there, bra area, everything, it was so great. And then Saturday they had the Safari Town in Clarence Square. So they had a big Safari Town music festival there with DJs and artists performing over there. And basically the gymnies took over the whole town. Wherever you went, every street you looked at, there was a gymni standing parked uh, on the pavements, in the ditches, wherever they could find a parking spot, they would park it, the whole town full. We are now on Sunday, it's on Heritage Day today, and we are doing the gymni gathering, the official gymni gathering. Like I said, there's hundreds of gymnies over here from all across the country. So it's very cool to see over there. On Saturday morning, there was also a 4x4 course. We could drive a like scenic, more scenic drive, 12 kilometers. It was actually a very fun drive. And I got to sit passenger in the five door when they did that. And the five door does feel more stable on the off-road, but I'll get to that now. Welcome to the all new Suzuki Gymni five door. I've had the privilege to drive this one down from Durban to Clarence. They brought five into the country uh, to do to bring them to the Suzuki gathering. And then I had the privilege to drive them down to the gathering, attend the gathering, and now I'm on my way to Johannesburg at the moment to drop it off there. So I'll give you a quick review on the vehicle. The biggest changes, like I said, is it being a five door, so I've got the extra door on it, the doors on it, and it's a 340 millimeters extra of wheelbase. This gives you more space in the boot, so the boot has a lot more packing space and feels adequate now and then you've also got the extra doors for your passengers at the back and the leg room at the back is also quite decent in my driving position i got into the back and i've got a comfortable amount of leg room back there i can also put my feet under the seats and i can comfortably sit there for an hour or two four hours not necessarily but for a quick weekend trip it is fine if you really need to and then you can also take out those seats if you want to have a lot more room at the back for like overlanding rig if you're just two people in here then you've got a lot more space at the back you've also got more space on the roof for a better roof rack Again, it has got the 1.5 litre non-turbo engine, exactly the same as the three-door. So it could be a little underpowered, especially with the more space, you're going to overpack it more. It's going to be heavier, so then it might be underpowered. At the moment, I'm driving the auto version. You do get it in manual as well. This is still the four-speed auto, same gearbox as the previous one. And it's just driving style. If you get to a steep hill, put it in overdrive, build up the revs. This is a petrol engine and an NA motor, and they love to rev. It revs up to 6,000 uh, revs. That's the red line and it does scream a bit when you get above 4,000 revs especially when downshifting when you want to go up a hill but like I said it's a petrol engine that's what they like to do and that's where the power lies so I've had not not had an issue I've been driving it at highway speeds at about between 100 and 120 it's very windy outside the entire trip so far and we've been averaging about 12 kilometers a liter this is a brand new vehicle it came off the ship last Wednesday so the odor is currently sitting on 800 kilometers so the engine also still be driven drive, drive being driven in so that means that the these figures could change a little there are some minor changes other than the wheelbase the boot now has 760 liters plus minus of extra space because of the longer wheelbase the infotainment system in the middle of it here has changed slightly the layout apparently and the screen is bigger and it's a bit more responsive according to a previous three-door Germany owner the infotainment system is a lot more responsive it has got Android Auto and Apple CarPlay I think it's wireless I managed to get it to work wireless once but not again and it did work wirelessly once like I said but I don't know how I did it it was by chance but it did work uh, and like I said it's the same engine inside here the grill in the front has slightly changed and that's about it slight change in bodywork styling uh, but other than that stayed the same approach and departure angles are pretty much the same the breakover angle is slightly different now but if you put a slightly bigger wheel on it maybe a lift kit or different suspension in it that breakover angle angle won't become an issue uh, it feels a lot more stable on the road we've been i've driven it now basically the 800 kilometers it has on the clock and we took it on an off-road course the saturday morning at the gymni gathering and it feels a lot more stable in the three door on the road with the wind it's much less bouncy the back end isn't as bouncy and it doesn't wobble around in the wind so much 
and the wind's been pumping. It pushes you around left to right, but no wobbling. And on the 4x4 route, it's also a lot more stable. It didn't feel as tippy and as bouncy. I drove the three door on the 4x4 route as well, and that felt way bouncier than this vehicle. Do know that the four door had four people in it, so the weight could have helped with that. But again, these cars are still stock standard that I'm driving. And yeah, that's basically my opinion about it. Uh, I like it for the fact that it is a lot more stable and it's just got a little bit of extra room you need in a Germany, in my personal opinion, being a content creator, always having three extra bags with me of camera gear over just the normal camping setup. So yeah, I really like the five door. I would pick this one over the three door. And if the engine um, capacity or the engine power is too little for you, you can always add a turbo. There's always a solution to that. Um, and then this is the ivory color I'm driving as well. This is my favorite color. They come out in, I think, five colors, but there's a new red they've launched. It's like this a darker red, not a very bright, vibrant red, but they've launched a darker red and then all the generic colors it comes in. And yeah, the official launch is only in November, so I don't have pricing yet. The official launch is in November. That's when the pricing will be announced and all the different models will be announced. So this was just kind of a pre-launch special they brought in, like I said, for the Germany gathering. So I'm on the road now, heading off to the last destination, but there's a bit more left for the Germany gathering in this video. So enjoy that bit over there as we break a Guinness World Record. It's just so many chimneys over here. It is quite crazy to see. Like I said, we took over the town and we basically took over the weekend. Everywhere we traveled over this weekend, you just saw chimneys on the road, flashing, saying hi, big smiles on their faces. Everyone's having an awesome time over here. And in about a few minutes time, we are going to try and break a world Guinness World Record about the most vehicles who are switching on their headlights simultaneously. So I'm going to go stand on the mountain on the right there to prep for that, because uh, there's a lot of cars here and it's quite an interesting world record we're going to break. Anyone who waits more than five seconds will be discounted. Are you ready? This is an official Guinness World Records attempt. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Here today at the Jimmy Gathering in Clarence, um, we saw an official attempt to set a new Guinness World Records title for the most cars to switch on their lights simultaneously. Now, final total 787, and it therefore gives me great pleasure to officially recognise the new Guinness World Records title. There you go, behind me over there, they're all leaving now, but it was about 800 Germany standing there, and we did break the official world record for the most lights switch on simultaneously. Like you, see, like you can see there, there's a lot of Jimnies over there. They're all busy making their way out. It was a fun day out here in Clarence. One more night I'm spending over here. There's a few artists more performing. And then tomorrow we are heading home. But yeah, like I said, it was an awesome event. Amazing to see the community out here. 800 people from across the nation came to support Jimny and Suzuki supporting the community by hosting this event. So well done for the Suzuki Jimny owners for showing how well a community, 4x4 community can be in South Africa.